Today's video is about a bike upgrade so impactful, it's like the difference between night and day. The topic of today's video is this stuff right here. Yes, that's right, compressionless brake housing. In this video, what is it and when you might want to use it? So the quest for better braking performance began with the build of this Poseidon Redwood right here that I built up a few weeks ago. In the first ride video, I commented that one of the only weak points is the lack of braking power in the stock Tektro mechanical disc brakes. Now, for the record, I had done the proper brake bedding process and I given it a few dozen miles and the rear brake did start to bite a little bit better but the front brake never got to a point where I was super comfortable down really steep and technical sections of trail. So I started to shop around for upgraded brakes thinking that I might go with something like a TRP Spire and maybe a different brake lever along with the bar end shifter but the cost started to add up pretty quickly and something was telling me to try compressionless housing first. So if you're wondering what compressionless housing is the concept is pretty straightforward. Standard cable actuated brake housing is created from a spiral wound core which allows it to be nice and flexible and easy to work with. The issue is that for higher tension brake systems like mechanical disc brakes, it can also flex axially, meaning it can stretch or compress in the direction of the brake line when the brakes are applied. This can result in a squishy feeling brake and in some cases it can substantially reduce the clamping force at the brake caliper. Now compressionless brake housing on the other hand does away with the spiral wound core and employs axial wire strands along the entire length much like your typical shift housing. Now this basically eliminates any axial flex in the housing, which in theory allows you to convert all the brake squeezing force at the lever directly to stopping power at the calipers. Now you might be tempted to simply use shift housing in lieu of brake housing, but unfortunately the diameters are a bit different so they aren't really compatible. Now installing this stuff is the same as any other brake housing and it will of course depend on the layout of your bike. Now this Poseidon Redwood has partial internal routing so it's marginally trickier to route, but nothing compared to a full internally routed frame set. Routing the rear housing on this Redwood is really easy since the frame uses a clever trick to run cables internally. You just need to push the housing through the down tube and the cables will slide right through the massive gap at the bottom bracket. Other budget friendly bikes like the latest Specialized Rockhopper use this same party trick to achieve the clean look of internal routing while minimizing manufacturing costs and setup time. On drop bar bikes like this, of course installing new housing means you'll have to rewrap the bars, so since everything was open anyways, it gave me a chance to shorten all the housings, including the stock shifter housing. Now I have to admit, when I was finishing up the install, I had my doubts as to whether the compressionless housing was going to make a noticeable difference, but damn, I was immediately blown away when I took it out for the first time. The lever feel was so much lighter than the stock setup, and I can now get plenty of stopping power from the hoods which wasn't really the case before. In its stock form, I'd basically have to get into the drops and grab a handful of brake if I wanted to stop suddenly. Also, after switching to compressionless housing, the brake feel is so much more precise. There's clear feedback from the caliper when the brakes have started to bite, and I would say that the modulation is much more predictable. Now, I think I can attribute the crisp brake feel to the axial strands in the housing, which of course eliminate the squish. That's kind of the point of compressionless housing. But the fact that the lever feel is so much lighter I think points to the use of the slick inner liner in this particular housing, which reduces friction in the system. Many standard spiral wound housings have this liner as well, and I'm betting that the stock housing on the Redwood is just stickier than other options. Now when you consider the fact that this bike runs full housing all the way from the lever to the caliper, the beneficial effects of a low friction housing can really add up. That was a good sentence right there. One thing you might also consider doing is using a higher quality slick inner brake cable. Now I didn't do it with this particular upgrade since these cables are pretty new, but anything to reduce the friction in the system is going to help with this application, again since it's a mechanical disc brake with full length housing. Okay, so clearly I've had a positive experience with this stuff, but I know that not everybody shares the same point of view. Now I think the degree of effectiveness of compressionless housing depends on the problem you're trying to solve. For instance, if you're experiencing subpar stopping power due to worn out or contaminated brake pads, then compressionless housing isn't gonna help at all. Now on the other hand, if your mechanical disc brakes are suffering from a squishy and vague lever feel, and you can actually see the housing move and compress as you squeeze the lever, then this stuff is more likely to help. Now I should be clear that this is not a sponsored video and I paid full price for this roll, which definitely wasn't cheap. It's something like $65 for a 10 meter roll. I will say though that if it's between this and a whole new brake setup, then going compressionless is a no brainer. Plus there's enough housing and plenty of fittings in the package to do several bikes. So the 
cost per bike ratio is quite a bit less if you think about it that way. Anyways, I assume if you stuck around this long, then you're probably taking stock of the bikes in your stable and thinking about which ones might benefit from this upgrade. Now, if that's the case, then using the affiliate link down below helps me out with a small kickback and doesn't cost you anything extra. Now, one last thing the keen viewer may notice is that in addition to the compressionless housing, I've also got different wheels, tires, and yes, different rotors on this build. But I can assure you that the rotors in this case have made a pretty insignificant difference as the improvement in the brake feel and power was virtually the same on the stock wheels and rotors as well. And this, of course, is a nice segue into the full upgrade video, which I'm currently working on. So if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more like it, then consider hitting the subscribe button. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Compressionless housing, it's good. What? Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.